Hey guys, what's going on? Josh here from Polymathics and today I want to talk to you about the struggle. And I also want to talk to you about uh, an analogy which is commonly referred to as the butterfly analogy and how it relates with the struggle. But first, let me just share with you that I'm struggling today with this video. Uh, this is my fourth time taking it, not because the, the other three times were bad. Um, I've been having a lot of equipment issues and um, one quit halfway through the conversation and the other two I was right at the end and it just blinked out and I lost all I don't know what happened so here I am back in my I was trying to give you guys a different background scenery but looks like that's not happening today back to the drawing board so all of us struggle all the time but um, today I want to share with you the story of the butterfly and many of you may have heard of it before it's got several different forms it's an older story but the way I heard of it I actually read it and it was several years ago and for those of you that have heard it before it's always good to hear it again I recently um, saw it um, today and I was reminded of it and I thought, you know, what a good thing to share with, with everybody. But uh, it's always good as a, you know, to have reminders. But when I read it, I was stationed overseas probably in 2003. And the, uh, it was in a book. It was uh, by Matt Stover. Excuse me, by Matt Stover. This is one of my favorite books, by the way. Uh, it's called Traitor. It's part of the New Jedi Order series. Back then, there wasn't a lot to do overseas, so I worked out and I read a lot of books. And the New Jedi Order series kind of caught my attention. This book in particular is the only one that I actually remember m anything from. Maybe the first one too, but that's it. Um, because it's such a phenomenal book. Very well written. The characters are great. So I recommend it, needless to say. But... Um, the story is about Jason Solo, and he is, uh, he's been taken, Jason Solo, by the way, is Han and Leia's, uh, eldest son, who is a twin. Anyways, he's taken captive by this alien culture called the Yuzan Vong, and this creature is put in charge of him, and her name is Vajir. And she is one of the coolest characters in the extended universe, which is now called Star Wars Legends, I believe. Something like that. Um, but uh, very interesting character. Very layered, multifaceted. And I don't want to give away too much of the story, but um, in the beginning, she tells him about the butterfly story. And, um, and so some of the language that they use in that book because it's science fiction they may say space butterfly or something like that but it's essentially the core story is there which is this a little boy is walking in the field and he comes across a <coughs> butterfly pardon me and um not, not a butterfly he comes across a cocoon and it's shaking and he realizes there's a butterfly in there trying to get out and so he sits down and he watches in amazement because he wants to see this butterfly fly for the first time. He thinks it's amazing. And so he sits there and he waits and he waits. He waits a long time. And, um, and then he says to himself, well, geez, maybe the butterfly is having a tough time getting out. Maybe I can help. So he takes out a pin. Some people think it's a pin, maybe a knife, whatever. He takes out a cutting device and he makes a slit in the cocoon just large enough for the butterfly to kind of plop out and now he's super excited and he's ready and he's waiting because he knows the butterfly is going to flap its wings and fly away and it doesn't instead there's this fat globulous kind of creature with the wings are all shriveled up around it it's kind of gross and he's not quite sure what he's looking at what is this? And so uh, he goes and he gets his dad or his granddad, depending on what story you're listening to. And um, 
and he says, "Dad, I don't get it. What's going on?" You know, he shows him, he shows him what's going on, and the father says, "Son, what did you do?" And he says, "Well, I took a pin and I, I cut open a slit." And the father says, "No, you can't do that." He says, "While the, while the caterpillar is in the cocoon." and it's half transformed into this butterfly it has to struggle against the cocoon the walls of the cocoon it has to push it has to fight the fight for its life to break free of those walls and in the in in that struggle what happens is all of the blood and energy goes into those wings it flexes those wings it makes them strong it helps them develop so that when the butterfly comes out it can flap its wings and fly wherever it wants to go. But because the boy helped the butterfly, thinking he helped the butterfly, what he really did was he ruined that butterfly's life. Because now that butterfly does not have the means to fight against and therefore develop its wings. And so, the lesson obviously is analogous to our own lives, right? So many of us want to take the easy road. We want to be comfortable. We don't want to stay up the extra hour or two that it takes to get things done, to write that book that we've always wanted to write, to study that subject that we want to become a master in, to sit down and take another 200 swings at the tee so that Tomorrow at the game, our hand-eye coordination will be perfect and masterful when the ball comes down the plate. We don't want to do that. Instead, we'd rather play video games, watch dramas on TV, go out for some drinks, or go to sleep. You know how many people sacrifice their dreams, their lives, sometimes their marriages and their families all because they let those things take precedence they let distractions take over their lives you have to be judicious you have to be careful because they'll slink their way in and they won't let go they're like snakes that constrict you they make you think that it's okay I know for me for a long time it was uh, it was video games and movies because I would tell myself no Josh you're learning you're learning some of the greatest stories of all time have been told through those mediums and so I did I wanted to learn how do these masterful storytellers do this and yes there's a time and a place for that but what I was doing was justifying my addiction to this distraction to these distractions and instead of chasing my, instead of fighting for my dreams and going out there and struggling and hustling, I was taking the easy way out. What are you doing right now? Right? And here's the thing I want you guys to think about. And this isn't anything new. Plenty of people have said it before. Every time you're sitting down watching TV, every time you're sitting down playing a game, Every time you're out drinking with the friends, right? Every time you decide to go to sleep early because you just, you don't feel like doing anything else. You're tired, right? Nothing else better to do. Someone else is out there working hard, hustling, fighting for their dreams, which they might one day get. The thing is, their dreams may be your dream, and they're taking it from you. And you're letting it happen because you're allowing these distractions to get in the way of who you are, who you are to become. The thing is, the butterfly has to struggle. It has to fight against those walls because it doesn't want to stay where it was or where it is. It wants to get out. It wants to fight. It wants to grow. It wants to develop so that it can fly away wherever it desires don't you want the same thing for your dreams
But the only way you can develop them is to constantly be looking for the struggle, for those failures that are not failures unless you let them be. If you stop, that's when it's a failure. If you keep going, it's a lesson, a lesson in the struggle. And the stronger you get, the, the longer you stay in the struggle, the stronger you get from those lessons. And you develop and you grow wings for your dreams to fly and take you wherever you want to be. But you have to fight for them. Not anybody else. No one else cares. You have to be the one who cares. You have to be the one who feels the sense of urgency every day. Every hour of every day. You have to live it and breathe it. If that's what you want to be, if that's who you want to become, you can't just do it sometimes when you're not watching TV or sometimes when you're not out with the boys. You got to do it all the time. You got to be it. You got to live it. You got to breathe it. Now, I know that may sound harsh, but the question is isn't that what you want for your life? Isn't that who you want to be? And listen, the rest of us want you to be that person too because it will enrich our lives. You being the best, most fulfilled, most best embodiment of who you are. Reaching your full potential will help us. Will help your family. Will help your love life. Will help everything. But the thing is, we can't do it for you. We can't cut a slip open for you. Because if we do, all we're allowing is for you to, to sit and you're going to end up just like that butterfly. You're going to stay exactly where you fell. And you're not going to be able to move. And eventually, one day, some predator is going to come along and eat you up for dinner. Because you're sitting fat and happy. Fat and happy. You got nothing else to do. You're paralyzed. I say this not to be harsh. I say it to be sobering because it was sobering for me. And don't for a second think that I wasn't privy to any of this, these same distractions, and I still am today. But this is a reminder for all of us. We are meant for greater things. And what are you going to do? And this has been said before too. What are you going to do on that day? 50 years, 20 years, 70 years from now, who knows how long it is, when you're lying on your deathbed and you're looking back on your life <coughs> and you're looking around and you're saying, what have I become? Or what have I not become? Someone once said in a really great speech, I don't know what it was and that's my bad. You know, what happens? What would you do if all of your dreams sat around you on your deathbed and watched you all your skills and ability and potential and dreams and that which you could have become sat there like ghosts hovering over you saying why did you do this to us why are you taking us to the grave why didn't you let us out and free into the world to become the great things that we are to make you great. Think about it today. What are those distractions that you're letting in your life? What are those things that you'd rather take the easy way out instead of fighting the struggle? And let me tell you, it's not easy, but you have to embrace it. Every time you feel that sense of danger, of excitement, of a little bit of fear, that's good. Embrace it. Take it in. I might fail. Good. Get the failure. Maybe get the success. You don't know. But figure it out. Don't sit there and chicken out. Or don't sit there and let life pass you by. Fail. At least you have something to show for it. At least you did something and who knows maybe you won't fail maybe you'll succeed and I think that's what scares you the most because if you succeed then you have to go the next step you have to embrace it when people tell you that's a crazy idea why would you do that 
you have to think in your mind, good, I'm going to prove them wrong. Because this isn't their dream. This isn't their thing. This is mine. And I own it. And when I, prove, when I do it, I'm going to show them. Not rub it in their face. My actions alone will show them without a doubt I knew what I was doing. Because I am the only one who can do what I do. You are the only one who can do what you do. So go out there and do it. All right, guys. I think that's enough out of me. But uh, think about the struggle and what kind of butterfly you want to be. Do you want to be the half caterpillar, half butterfly creature that was left sitting on the log ready for some predator to come eat? Or do you want to be the beautiful creature that breaks free from its prison and flies away in whatever direction it desires. That's up to you. You gotta figure that. But I hope this video has been helpful and at the least I hope I introduced you to a book that you read and you find really good. Uh, in the meantime, <laughs> you guys take it easy.